Hello, children. Hello, Auntie. Now, who can tell me why we come here every time? Auntie, I can I go first? Yes, Ibi. Auntie, I came here because I love stories and I want to make new friends. Me too, Auntie. That's very good. It's good that you want to make new friends. But we should always remember that the stories we hear are to learn important lessons. And my first story is about friendship and it's dedicated to you, beautiful children. Are we ready? Yes, yes auntie. auntie. Story, story, story. Once upon a time, Once upon a time, there lived a family of hawks in a lake near a forest. The family included the father, mother, and their three children. There also was a lion, a kingfisher, and a turtle living in the same forest. One day, the wife asked her husband, Nay! How many friends do you have near here? He replied, I do have friends, but not one in this part of the forest. She then asked, Dear, you must find some friends at least. We should have someone who can help us if ever we are in trouble or in danger. She Dara asked, With whom shall I make friends? You can make friends with the kingfisher, the lion and the turtle who live on the eastern, the northern, and the southern shore of this lake. He liked the idea and went to the lion, the kingfisher, and the turtle one by one and made friends with them. Everyone was happy to make a new friend. Everything was going smooth in their lives when suddenly some came to the for hunting. They hunted in the forest from morning till night, but found nothing. They didn't want to go home empty-handed, so they went to the lake in order to see what they could find there. When they couldn't locate anything, even in the lake, one of them said, Let us stay here tonight and see what we can find in the morning. They made their beds under the tree in which the hawk family had its nest. However, the hunters could not sleep because they were disturbed by the flies and the mosquitoes. Ultimately, they got up and built a fire on the lake so that the fumes would drive away the flies and mosquitoes. The fumes awoke family and their children cried out. Hearing the cries of the baby hawks, one of the hunters said to the other, Did you hear that? That was the cry of the birds. They will make a delicious meal for our breakfast. There are young ones in that nest. Pointing towards the nest, the hunters put more wood on the fire and made it blaze up. The parents listened to the conversation of the hunters. Ifoma, the mother, was frightened and said to her husband, these men are planning to eat our young ones. We have to ask our friends to save us. Her husband flew speedily to the kingfisher's nest and woke him up with his cry. He narrated the whole story to the kingfisher. The kingfisher consoled the hawk and said, Don't worry, my friend. I will help you. Then both of them went to call their other friend, Turtle. All three rushed back to the sea. On arriving, the kingfisher saw the burning fire and instantly started beating some water with his wings over the fire, which eventually put it out. The hunters made another fire and one of them tried to climb up the tree. As often as the fire was made, the kingfisher would put it out. But by midnight, the kingfisher got very tired, so the turtle dived into the water collected some mud and put the fire out with it. On seeing the turtle, the hunters cried, Why bother for the young hawks? Let us kill this turtle. It will make a nice breakfast for us. We have to be careful, otherwise it will bite us. Let us throw a net over it 
and turn it over. But they didn't have nets with them, so they took some vines and tore their clothes to make a net. When they tried to put the net over the turtle, they could not roll him over. Instead, the turtle suddenly dived into the deep water, making their efforts vain. The hunters decided to make another fire and try again to catch the young hawks. Ifoma quickly told her husband to call their other friend, the lion. Soon the lion came roaring. On hearing the lion's roar, the hunters cried, Now all of us will be killed. They began to pack their things and ran away as fast as they could run. When the lion approached the tree, not even a single hunter was visible. The hawks were happy to find the hunters were gone. They all laughed as the hunters ran away. Moral, friends in need are friends indeed. Auntie, it's a beautiful story. Thank you very much, B. But did you learn any lesson? Yes, Auntie. I learned that it is good to have friends because when you need something, they can come together to help you. Beautiful. Friends are there to make us laugh and help us when we're in trouble. But we must always respect them and listen to what they say. There was once a fowl who was friends with the rat, but he never listened to the rat and he paid dearly for it. Once upon a time, some years back, all animals met weekly at the king's palace. It was the custom as directed by the king. One day, Rat was on his way to the meeting. He called the fowl on his way, but the fowl responded that he was not feeling fine and could not attend, when indeed he really was feeling very fine. Rat went to the meeting and told the other animals why the fowl could not come when attendance was called. Every time there was a meeting, the fowl would refuse to attend because he just couldn't be bothered by whatever they had to discuss. He made a new excuse every week, which the rat would disclose to the animals. Time passed and the priest informed the king that there was to be a famine. However, they would avoid the famine if they had a sacrifice of the animals to the gods. The king was so confused how could he choose which animal to sacrifice to the gods? The king decided to let the animals choose themselves. The next week, the king invited all the animals to his palace for their weekly meeting. As usual, the rat whose cave was near the fowls told the fowl about the invitation. The proud and unfriendly fowl replied, Friend, I am not interested. Why must I leave my house to see the king? I can't afford to waste my precious time. Whatever decision you guys make, I agree with because I simply do not care. Then the rat left for the meeting and the animals gathered at the king's palace without the fowl. When the king saw them, he told them about the famine coming and announced that the only solution was that one of them had to be made a sacrifice to the gods. Alas, fear gripped all the animals. Each of them started giving excuses on why he or she could not be used as a sacrifice. One of the animals then suggested the fowl, but the fowl was not available to defend himself. And because of the fowl's arrogance, all the animals immediately chorused Yes, the fowl is the best. Having realized the position of the fowl concerning all decisions made in the past, the king decided that the fowl should be sacrificed at festive periods in order to avoid famine. The rat ran home and said to the fowl, Oh fowl, 
you were not at today's meeting. The file cut him short. I have told you that I agree with whatever decision you make at the meeting. Now let me be. That was how the fowl ignorantly became the sacrificial animal at festive periods. So children, did you learn any lesson from the story? Yes, Auntie. We should respect our friends and listen to them. Sometimes we think that it's only mommy and daddy we should listen to. Beautiful, Alice. Sometimes we don't listen to our friends because we think that they are young like us, so they don't have anything important to say. But it's not true. Many times our friends are smart and they tell us things that will help us, just like mommy and daddy. Auntie, sometimes I'm afraid to tell my friends to stop doing bad things. I feel they laugh at me. Ibiye, you must tell them to stop. Even with our friends, we must have courage to tell them the truth. How can I have courage? Maybe this story will help you. Once upon a time, in a far away land, This story happened in a village far away. At this time, the village and its people were very prosperous. They were skilled in war, farming and hunting. There was abundance of food and the villagers were happy. Ikiru was well known for its giant buildings, walls and its ever-flourishing water. It was a land of peace, unity and security and often people called it a land with milk and honey. However, Ikiru has a problem. Their great king was not happy. The king had only a female child, hence he didn't have a heir to take over the throne as the custom demands. Then one night, the king called his right-hand man and told him that he has an idea. The king commanded him to summon all the able men in his kingdom to his palace. They were to go on a difficult task and any man that could accomplish this task would be rewarded abundantly. The king said he would divide his possession between himself and the man. Half of his kingdom would be given to him and his only daughter would be married to such a man. On the day that was scheduled for the task, the king's yard was filled with men, both young and old. They were ready for this noble task that attracted such a great price. The king's right-hand man came forward and declared that any man who could cross the dreadful sea would get these prices. As soon as he said this, the place changed. Many of the old men drew back, including some young men. Then he continued. This man must bring back the ancient white wood from the evil forest. But before he could finish his words, some men withdrew and the yard became scanty. They were disappointed and angry. Again, he continued. This man would not take anything with him. No food, no weapon. As soon as he mentioned this, all the men withdrew except one. Surprised, the king moved closer and asked the young man why he did not leave like the others. The rough, rugged and good-looking young man answered and said he did not go back because he has accomplished a difficult task in his mind. He has the spirit and mindset of victory. He didn't know how he was going to accomplish the mission. All he knew was that he was not going to fail. The king looked at the young man and raised his hand as he addressed the spectators. He said the man's action has revealed that many people are destined to succeed, but only a few are determined. Many have failed before they started their life's journey. The young man was able to succeed because he won the greatest battle, the battle of the mind. He then declared that the young man be given half of the kingdom and a feast was prepared in honor of the man. Soon, he was married to the king's daughter, and when the king died, he took over the throne. And a fine king he was. 
Mora. Believe in yourself. Determination will get you far. Kamsi, did you learn any lesson from the story? Yes, <laughs> Auntie. To believe in myself. Beautiful. It doesn't matter how small or how young you are. We should all know that we're special and that we'll do great things. And as we go home, always tell yourself and tell your mommy and daddy, I am very special. Good night, children. Good night, Auntie. Bye-bye. Hello children, it's time for our trivia. Now let's see what you've learned today. 